everybody welcome to kelly's creations i'm so glad you're here so how many of you love beauty and the beast i'm guessing a few since you clicked on this video this is gonna be a beauty and the beast mini so this was my inspiration photo it's just an inspiration photo to inspire me to create something inside this amazing beauty and the beast box that i found at goodwill as soon as i saw it i grabbed it not realizing it actually is a box that came with a puzzle so i guess inside this box was a beauty and the beast puzzle but as soon as i saw it even though it has a little imperfections here and there i knew i wanted to use this box to create a mini and since i didn't have that much width going on in the box i figured that the castle room with the rose would be the perfect mini to put in this box so Using some tin foil, I thought that would be a great way to shape some pillars. I didn't want to do this with solid total clay because it was really heavy without doing it <laughs> that way. So what I'm doing right now is kind of just getting the shape and the width of my pillar. So I'm just crinkling up some tin foil, and instead of using tin foil for the bottom, I had this in my stash, and it's a paper towel, um, cardboard piece that paper towels were on. So I thought since it's thicker than my little tin foil, that would make a very good base for my castle pillar. So I'm just maneuvering it around, getting it exactly where I want it. I'm gonna use an old pill bottle for the pillar where the rose will be. So now I'm just going to attach my tin foil to my cardboard cylinders, just kind of by smashing the tin foil bottom, putting it in the cardboard, putting it back in the box to make sure I am correct with my sizing, height, so on and so forth but it's tinfoil, so if I'm a little off, I can always fix it. Then I'm using duct tape to secure the tinfoil in place um, so that it wouldn't go back down into the cardboard cylinder anymore. I wanted it to stay exactly where it was, so I grabbed some duct tape to hold it in place. That worked out perfectly, and now I can start with my clay. So what I am gonna be using is air dry clay from Crayola. Um, I have a big old bucket of it and I've been playing around with it. So, and I have a glass of water sitting on the side. So what first I do is I just grab some of that clay and I knead it. I add a little water to it and just keep kneading it. And this, was perfect. I've been watching some videos on clay and kneading it really well kind of keeps it from cracking. So I learned something. I also saw the girl added water to her structure before putting the clay on. She was not using air dry clay. She was using polymer clay, which I don't have. So we're kind of going along the lines, you doing the same technique, but with the air dry. So what I'm doing is just taking clay and covering that whole little structure that I built. Now I'm gonna take some clay and roll it and put it around the base of both of the pillars to make it just a little fatter at the bottom. Um, and just using my finger, using water and getting it kind of smashing it in. I will come in with water and kind of try to smooth it out a little bit for the big kind of chunkiness that you're seeing. I don't know any other way to describe it, <laughs> but it doesn't have to be totally smooth because this is a pillar in a castle and it's supposed to mimic, I'm guessing, cement. So cement has a lot of imperfections and so does my pillar. <laughs> But I do try to smooth some of the big wonky areas at the top and on the sides with water. So 
So I got it smoothed out as good as it needs to be. Like I said, I'm adding texture and stuff to it anyway. So I came in with a spatula and I just kind of went around where the tin foil meets the cylinders because that's going to be different texture than the top. So I was kind of just using a tool and then came in with this ball tool just to kind of really make that different than the other part. Now, I do bring it back into the box just to make sure that it fits <laughs> and that it fits with my pill bottle pillar <laughs> because that would be awful if I did all this and it didn't fit. So we're good. I'm setting that aside for right now and I'm going to come in with some Waverly and in ink and I am going to paint the inside of the box. I'm going to do the inside. I'm going to do up on the edges and I'm even going to go around the rim with the black paint. I chose black because the castle is supposed to be dark and you know a little scary at first. Um, so I thought black would be perfect and then I wouldn't have to do anything to the inside of the box because the showcase is what I'm adding to it. I didn't want to put brick or anything on the walls. I didn't want this to be over cluttered. I wanted the rows and the pillars and I'm going to add a window, all that to be showcased. So to add texture to your clay, a great way to do it. One of the ways, there's so many. You can use a toothbrush. I chose since I had my tinfoil out just to take a little bit and roll it into a ball and pat the clay. This adds so much texture to to that clay. I am doing this while the clay is still fresh and uh, hasn't dried yet. So I'm getting just a ton of texture by using the tin foil. Once I had it all textured up. <laughs> then I came in with another tool, kind of like a pick tool. I don't know what any of these tools are called. I'm new to this. And I am going around with that and making circles to mimic stone. So I got my texture. I'm using the tool. I go around. I make little circles. I make big circles. I fill up the whole top of the pillar in circles. Not really concerned. I do, if if I make a circle and it takes away a lot of clay, I do take that off of the tool and set that aside. But the bumpiness that you get when I'm making the circles, I wasn't that concerned about that because that to me added more texture to the pillar. And I did not do the back because you're not going to see it, but I did all of the sides, the top, and I came in on the inside as well and made circles. Now I am taking that spatula and I'm making lines and I'm making lines going all the way down to the bottom. Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to make lines going vertical um, to mimic bricks. I want the bottom pillar to look like it's brick. So I take my spatula and kind of just eyeball it and go around the front and I go around the sides bringing my spatula in to meet the line that I already have in place. Then I just take my spatula and start drawing lines and I want, I hope I can explain this properly. As you can see I'll draw two lines and then when I go down to the next row I start in the middle so that the bricks are staggered and it's not like a whole big one single row line of bricks. I'm sure you understand that because everybody has seen bricks. <laughs> so I do this to both sides of the pillars on the bottom. Okay, so I got my bricks done. Now it's time to put it back in the box. I'm using super glue. Um, I don't know if that's the correct glue to use, but I do know in a previous video when I did my kitchen and I did a stone wall, super glue held the stones on and they haven't moved. So I figured super glue would be the best glue right now to use. Um, I do know for a fact that 
hot glue does not work so i am going to super glue this inside the box i know it isn't dry yet it's also not painted yet but i figured it would be easier to paint in the box than outside the box so this is where i'm going to glue it down and i'm going to let this dry i think i let it dry a whole 24 hours before i came back to paint so right now I'm getting it situated. I'm making sure it's exactly where I want it to be. I'm taking a tool and I'm kind of smoothing the bottom into the box and really making sure before I set this aside to dry that all of the details that I want to add to this are done and then it can dry thoroughly and I'll come back to paint it. Okay, so I got it in the box exactly how I want it. I set that aside to dry. So I ordered a bunch of these die cut, I think that's how you say it, die cut um, cardboard windows, okay? Um, they're all pre-cut. I ordered them off of Amazon and oh my gosh, what a bang from a book. I got so many. Instead of using paint, I am using one of those furniture markers because I figured paint would uh, make this bend <laughs> and warp and I didn't want that to happen. So these are all of the windows and different things I got that were die cut. Um, they all was one, it was all one purchase and I'll have that link below if you're interested in checking that out. But these were pretty awesome. So I wanted a little bit more texture to my window frame and that I just used a Sharpie and I came in and drew lines to mimic wood. And I just took my Sharpie and went all over where I had already painted with the wood marker. Then I take my wood marker and I come in, and I kind of blend it all in right after I use the Sharpie. So the Sharpie is still wet on there. It blends in so good and you get a really neat wood texture. Um, it also, I'm so glad I didn't use paint because even using the wood marker, I could tell it was getting a little saturated and getting a little bendy and I wanted this to keep its shape. So I'm glad I didn't use paint. So to make the window, I am using blue and gray and wax paper. And I add a little bit of water to the metallic blue. And I am just freehanding a scene. You're not gonna see it all because the window's gonna be on it. But I wanted there to be a scene just like on my original picture. And I thought wax paper would be perfect because I'm also gonna add light behind this window and I wanted it to illuminate. So this worked out really good. First, I put blue on my wax paper and really just slathered that blue all over the wax paper and came in with a um, baby wipe to get the excess off. Once I had my blue, then I came in with the gray and kind of dabbed the gray on. Then I came in with black and I drew branches. And then I came in with white and I added snow to the branches just to create an outdoor scene when you look through this window. The white really highlights everything and that is, it really shows through the window frame. And there's the picture again, that was my inspiration. And you can see the blue through the window. That's kind of what I was trying to mimic here. So then I just came in with some craft glue and put it on my window frame and I glued the window frame right down to the wax paper, gluing it where the part of the picture that I had painted um, really showed through. So I kind of just set it down where I thought there was the most in the background and glued that right down to the wax paper. Once I had that glued down to the wax paper, all I had to do was trim the excess wax paper around the window frame and voila, perfect little window for my Beauty and the Beast cave book. <laughs> cave it's not a cave castle book <laughs> so what is your favorite disney 
princess. Who is your favorite Disney princess? What is your favorite Disney movie? Leave that in the comments below. I would love to know. Beauty and the Beast is probably my favorite. Um, I have a lot of favorites, but Beauty and the Beast, I don't know, that was always my favorite. Um, and Little Mermaid, Lion King, of course, all the classics. But um, now I am, I was dying to see what the window would look like with the fairy lights behind it. That's going to look so awesome. So I am brainstorming at this point trying to figure out how I can use one strand of fairy lights to illuminate the window and the rose. So yeah, I think I think I actually went to bed that night thinking, how am I going to use one strand to do this? But hey, where there's a will, there's a way and I figured it out. So now we're going to work on the pillar and all I did was take some black paint. I painted that pill bottle. I came in with my brick stencil and I painted the this is pewter gray. Um, I wanted a hint of the brick on the uh, pillar. So I came in with my brick stencil and painted it. And then I just kind of wrapped that around the pill bottle to give it some bricks on there. Um, I did do the back just because I had to finish it. <laughs> I know you weren't going to see it. But yeah, I just put a little bit on the back too. Then I came in and I highlighted the bricks to make them stand out just a little bit more. But first, before I do that, I needed a top for this. And I was kind of looking around my craft room and my ribbon, I thought the cardboard holder for the ribbon was a perfect top for my pillar. It just needed to be cut down and actually see where that cardboard ripped off. That was the perfect size. So all I had to do was cut around that cardboard and it was a perfect topper for the pillar, which is gonna hold the rose. I painted underneath just in case you could see it. And then I glued it down and I painted the top black to match the rest of it. I highlighted the bricks in pewter. I didn't want it too bright, but I wanted the bricks to kind of stand out a little bit more than what they were. And then I would come in with a baby wipe and kind of dab it to blend it in. I didn't want this being perfect. I wanted this to look like it was old and had been around forever. And you're really not gonna see, this is kind of a background effect because there will be stuff in front of it, but I wanted that illusion that this was a brick pillar. I think that turned out really good. You can tell it's brick. It's not perfect. That's why I kept padding it. I did not want perfect little bricks on there. And it will be the perfect little background because there will be moss and a few flowers on this. So using hot glue, I went around the rim of that pill bottle and filled that with hot glue. And that's how I glued that cardboard piece to the top of this and then I painted the whole top of it black to match the pill bottle and that is my pillar. I forgot to mention I also came in with the pewter and I just dabbed over the black um, with that pewter. I needed a base for this because I wasn't going to be able to glue it down so I grabbed a um, poster board. I went blank as usual. One of the thick poster boards from Dollar Tree and I just drew around the circle and cut it down so that I could glue it inside the pill bottle and that would be my base. So now I have a base to my little pillar and I am going to get my drill and I am going to start drilling a hole in the top 
First, I'm going to make sure where the cloche will fit. This cloche is going to have the rose in it. It's also going to have lights. So I wanted to make sure exactly where it was going to fit on the pillar. I'm going to drill a hole in the top and then I'm going to drill a hole in the bottom and make that hole in the bottom a little bigger so I can maneuver the lights. In my picture, it showed icicles hanging off of the pillar. At first, I took my glue gun. I ran around the edges of the pillar and tried to have the glue dripping down, and then I would paint it, and that was not working. So what I decided to do is I made a couple icicles just by using my glue gun on this white paper, letting it dry, cut it out, and then well, I painted it, sorry. <laughs> I came in, I painted it white, and then I let all that dry, and then I just cut out my individual icicles and glued them to the pillar. Once I had the icicles glued down, I came in with some white paint, touched up any areas, and I also went around the edge with the white, and I went around a little bit of the top with white as well. I also came in with some silver glitter glue in a tube, and I went over the top and the icicles, just hoping it would make it really um show the glitter when that light is on in the rose and i thought this added to the piece and really brought the icicles and that snow on top alive So now I have the pillar exactly the way I want it. Now it's time to start working on inside of the box on the, uh, I guess you would call it the castle pillars. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the whole inside pillars with this pewter. That's going to be my base coat. I'm going to try not to get any on the black, but if I do, that's a real simple touch up coming back in and touching up with the black. So my columns are totally dry and I'm just going to give that base coat of that pewter because when I come in with the next coat, I didn't want any of the cream clay i'm totally losing my train of thought i didn't want any of the clay to show so there's my base coat now i'm going to come in with the metallic gray and i'm going to go over the bottom where the bricks are and really kind of highlight those bricks and make the bricks stand out more with that metallic gray as i'm painting over the bricks you can really see them really start to pop and that's what i wanted even though this is one piece i didn't want it i wanted it to have separation where the stone arch is from the bricks at the bottom and i think the metallic really separates that i wanted the top being a duller even though i do come in just with the little tops of the gray just to highlight it um, Beauty and the Beast is, you know, magical, and I didn't want it totally being boring up there. But now for the third coat, I'm going to use Waverly in black ink mixed with water, and I'm kind of going to do a wash over that stone, kind of just letting my brush 
dabbing around that stone and since it's watered down paint just kind of letting it fill in those little gaps where the circles are and all my little gaps I have in the stone. And then I just come back in with a baby wipe and pat down just to get the excess. I was hoping the black would just kind of fill in those gaps. I also take a thin uh, paintbrush and I go over the indents of the brick to highlight those as well with that watered down black. I come in again and remove the excess. I really didn't want the black on the brick itself. I just wanted it filling in the indents of the separation of the bricks. I did both sides the same exact way. Then I came in with that watered down black and I went around the top of the brick where it meets the stone arch and highlighted in there too another Again, just to give that separation between the bricks and the arch. I also came in because it wasn't filling in as much as I had hoped. So I did come in with that watered down black and I went around all of those little circles I had made in the stone. This is just about layering, layering, layering until you get it to look exactly how you want, which in my case, I really wanted it to look like um cement stone that kind of effect so i just kept going over it until i was satisfied i was satisfied with how this was turning out so i left it alone i quit adding more to it here's a up close look at it my light is shining on it so the pictures with my camera, the filming never gives it justice in my opinion because it's not as bright at the top as it is on the bottom, but my camera with the lighting and everything is making it look like it kind of all is, but it's not. <laughs> I didn't like how bright the sides of this book were. It was too bright. I just wanted to dull them down a little bit. So I just grabbed some brown paint and went over the top and bottom and sides just to dull this down. I just thought it was a little too bright. And I also, once this was dry, I came in with the furniture markers and kind of drew lines as well um, with the darker colors to darken this up. I had gotten these cloches off of Amazon and it comes with a wooden base, comes with a little top, and it comes with a glass cloche. I thought this would be perfect to add the topper onto the glass and this would be the dome where the rose will be. I used some crafting glue to attach the metal piece to the top of the glass. I used a little bit too much, so I had to wipe some away, but that seemed to work really good. And this is the perfect little dome for that rose. Now to add the rose. I went into my stash and I grabbed a red rose that I had, and then I grabbed the stem off some more floral, and I transplanted the red rose onto the stem because I liked that stem better and it worked better. All I had to do was cut down the stem, and then I added the little rose to that stem, and then I trimmed the rows down because it was a little bit too full for the glass. Now it's time to add the lighting. So I flipped my book over, took my drill, and drilled a hole into the bottom of the book. I had the intention, and it actually worked out, that I was gonna use one fairy light. I did not want two lights in this book because it would have been overpowering and just way too much lighting. So I was brainstorming of how to use one fairy light for the dome and for 
the picture. So once I drilled the hole into the back, I just fed the fairy lights through the back of that hole, brought them all the way to the end. There's always a gap in the lights where there isn't any light and it's a little bit thicker. So once I got to that point, I stopped. And I can just Velcro the lighting case to the back of the book. So I pulled my fairy lights through and now it's time to figure out how to get them to go through the base and to light up that picture. And I'm so glad I figured it out because this project would have not been the same if that picture wasn't lit up. It totally, totally transfer transformed that picture. So if I can explain this to you guys, I'll do my best. What I did is I pulled the fairy light through the bottom, but I had folded it in half. And I kept a little bit, first I kept a little bit out, then I folded it in half and I put it through the bottom. That way I had fairy lights on the outside and then I had fairy lights coming up through my pillar. So the fairy lights on the outside are gonna light up the picture and the fairy lights I pulled through the center of the pillar, those will light up the rose. Once I had them both pulled through, all I had left to do is to glue that pillar down to the box. For this, I did use hot glue and glued the base down to the center in between the castle pillars. So I have it all glued down. Now I went back to the air dry clay and took a little piece, kneaded it really good, and I put it at the base of that pillar to finish off the look. That way it matches the other two pillars. And making sure everything is in place before I do this, there's the clay. I'm just gonna really knead it. The more you knead it, the less cracks you get. I learned that. So um, I just make a little flat base and I put it all around the bottom. Then I come in and I paint it to match. Okay, so we got everything in place and my hit my phone and it stopped recording. So I'm just going to walk you through this. Sorry about the lighting. I should have moved that as well. So this part is a little dimmer. So what I had done is I that part that the lights that were on the side of the pillar, I scrunched them together. I glued them down to the box. Then I glued my window on top of it. Now the little string that you can see under the window, I'm just gonna paint that black to blend in with the box. I use hot glue on the bottom of my rose and I glue my rose down to the pillar. I had glued it to a petal actually, and then I glued that down to the pillar because that was a lot easier than gluing the stem down. Then I put some more glue down and I added some more of the petals that I had cut off around that rose so it looks like it was dropping petals. Now I'm just gonna use some super glue and glue around the rim and attach this on top of the rose. So I feed my fairy lights in and put the super glue down on there and glue this to the base. I was hoping that I could do this without getting glue on the inside of that, but I did hit a little bit on the inside, um, which I was really bumped out about, but at that point, there wasn't really anything I could do to fix that. So I am 
doing my best to kind of bunch up those fairy lights, get them settled in behind that rose. Then I add the super glue to the cloche and I glue it down over the rose. The last little detail to add to this is some reindeer moss. So I'm going to use some craft glue. I'm going to put it on the pillar and I'm going to add some reindeer moss to the pillar. And then I'm going to take some little flowers and I'm going to glue them down to the reindeer moss as well. Just to mimic the inspirational photo, it had moss and flowers on the pillar. So I was trying to take inspiration from that photo and replicate it. So I just added just a little bit and then I glued flowers to the top of it. So I have all of the details inside the book and I am absolutely loving the way this turned out. The window is amazing. It really looks kind of 3D where you can look with the lights on. It really pops and looks like you're looking outside. And here's the final reveal. The book opens and you have this beautiful setting inside of your book of the castle where the rose is, which I think is iconic to Beauty and the Beast. I love that the rose lights up. I love that the window lights up. I love all the little details about this. I think this turned out so stinking cute. I am so glad I attempted this because this one kind of scared me. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video because I had so much fun doing this little Beauty and the Beast scene. Let me know in the comments below what's your favorite Disney movie and let me know what was your favorite part about today's DIY. I hope you guys are having a blessed and wonderful week. I will be back next Tuesday with another mini video since everybody is requesting minis. And if you have a suggestion, leave that in the comments below too of what you would like to see. I have a few ideas that I'm super excited about. So have a great week, you guys. Love you. See you next Tuesday. Bye, y'all.